Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is the fourth in the series on um, multi-threading in Java from Cave of Programming and in this tutorial we're going to look at using multiple locks and um, synchronized code blocks in your application. So um, I've got a, um, an application set up here with, um, it has a main method and I've got a really simple class called worker which also has a, a main method, just a public void main method and my, my main application is just creating a new worker object and running its main. So the bottom line is um, if I run this now um, this is just outputting hello because this method's being run. Now I'm going to give worker um, a couple of I'm going to give it some private um, instance data. I'm going to give it a private, uh, just for fun, let's make this a list. Um, so in, in uh, previous tutorials, we've looked at incrementing integers from different threads. And um, let's take a look now at the kind of problems you get with lists. Um, so let's make this a list of integers. And I'll call this list1. And I'll set it equal to a new list of integers like this. Um, a new array list that is, let's make this an array list and I'll add the imports to the Java util list and um, let's put a semicolon there and let's, um, let's have another one of these, a list 2 and um, I'm going to give this worker um, objects. I'm going to give it a couple of methods. I'm going to imagine that worker does some processing and the processing can be broken down into um, stage one and um, stage two. So let's have a public void stage two. And now stage one is going to do something with this list one here. So um, let's just um, just have something to do. I'll just declare um, a random number generator up here. So this doesn't really have anything to do with multi-threading, but I'm just um, trying to make this kind of uh, as semi-realistic as possible. And let's imagine that stage one, um, uh, it does some kind of a calculation which takes a bit of time or maybe it gets some information from somewhere. To, to simulate that, I'm just going to have a thread.sleep for one millisecond um, just to um, slow the, the program down a bit and just to simulate going away and getting some information from somewhere. And let's, see, let's then imagine that it adds that information to list one. So it says this one.add and I'll just, here I'll just use random.nextint. So I'll add ra random numbers here to this list. But you could imagine that this is going away and pinging a machine, and um, although it would probably take a bit longer, and adding the um, ping time to a list, for example. Now stage two here, let's imagine that that does something also similar, um, except that it adds stuff to list two. And now I'm going to have I'm going to add a process method that's going to do all the processing. So I'll call it public, public void process. And this is just going to call um, stage one and stage two in a loop. So let's say um, that it has, we could try a thousand iterations of this loop. And um, so let's say I plus plus here. And for every time it goes around the loop, it calls, calls stage one and stage two, like this. Now let's let's try running this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some code into my main method that times how long this processing takes. So I'm going to say here long start equals uh, system dot current time milliseconds. There we go. And at the end, I'll say long end equals system dot current time milliseconds. And I can output the duration here. I can say um, 
time taken and I'll add on there um, end minus start and let's also output the list sizes just for fun let's say um, list1 um, plus list1 dot size and I'll say um, here list list2 and let's output list list two dot size. Okay, now um, in the middle here, I'm going to call between start and end. I'm going to call process, and so the process method will iterate um, a thousand times, and every time it goes on a loop, it will call first stage one and stage two, and stage one is writing to the first list, and stage two is writing to the second list. Um, now, if I if I run that. Um, would expect it to take let's see um, so it's taken roughly two seconds just a little bit longer which is what we'd expect really because um, we've got uh, a sleep of one millisecond in each stage and um, we're calling stage one and stage two so there's two of them that makes two milliseconds and we're, we're doing that a thousand times so that adds up to two seconds now um, you're, you might think if um, let's say that um, what we're actually doing here is you know it could be pinging a machine or I don't know processing some file or something and you might think well I could speed this up a lot um, by doing multiple running multiple um, processes at the same time so I, I could have multiple threads and each one could run process and actually in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at thread pools which is ideal for this sort of thing where you can create a whole bunch of threads to work through whatever work you have to do but here let's just stick with creating a couple of threads so I'll say here um, new thread and I'll pass this a an instance of runnable and this is just a very slight variation on what we've seen in previous tutorials and I'll, I'll implement the runnable method in here and in run um, sorry, I'll implement the run method, public void run, and in run I'll call, I'll call process. Um, and now I can start that just by calling here um, start. So if I, yeah, Eclipse is not being terribly helpful. If I press a dot and then I can call start, there we go. So this is a very minimalist way of running a thread, basically equivalent to um, declaring a variable and pointing it at that thread and then calling the variable dot start but you can just do it in, in um, very few lines like this if you want now I'm gonna have another one uh, well at the moment let's just check that that actually does what we expect so this should take two seconds to run roughly um, in fact I need to wait for that thread to finish so uh, actually I'm gonna have to create a variable here I'm gonna say thread uh, t1 equals because um, I need to call t1.start and then I need to call t1.join because I need to wait for that thread to finish before I can get any meaningful results about my processing so um, let's try that and um, now we'll see so that took two seconds as before just as we'd expect but now we can run two of these threads at the same time so if I copy that um, and I could have t2 there and I'll say t2.start and in here I also need to wait for the second thread to finish as well and now if I run that would expect that it would still take two seconds because um, I know that I'm not putting a huge load on my computer because actually all it's doing is sleeping so um, CPU load is not going to be a factor in slowing this down and I'm kicking these off at the same time let's move this down here to make it even more obvious we're running these two threads simultaneously so in theory it should still take two seconds and uh, let's have a look at what happens when we actually do try to run it and we'll see this is going to be a bit of a nightmare so we try to run it and well that actually ran fine except that um, we've not got 2000 items in each list some of them have gone missing and if I run it a few times, um, well, 
actually another time was enough it turns out we're going to get these um, array index out of bounds exception exceptions and these are um, these are just the normal problems that you expect if you try to access shared data from multiple threads um, we've looked at that problem um, in the last tutorial in the context of um, incrementing an integer but of course you get the same problems with threads interleaving um, if you're trying to write to a list because um, writing to a list is not a single step operation multiple things have to happen within that list and if the threads interleave it causes all kinds of crazy problems so we know that we're going to have to make these methods synchronized so I'm going to make this synchronized and I'm going to make this synchronized and we think, okay, now um, we shouldn't see any, we sh the list should have the right number of items in them and we wouldn't expect to see any funny exceptions. So if I run this, and would hope that it would take two seconds. But in fact, what happens is that it's actually taken more like four seconds, although the lists are now the right sizes and I can merrily run it as often as I want without getting any exceptions and they will always have the right number of items in them but it's always taking twice as long as we expect so what's the reason for that um, and the reason is that uh, as, we, as, as we've seen um, uh, I think in the last tutorial um, when you call the synchronized method that is going to um, acquire the intrinsic lock or the monitor lock you could call it of the worker object here and uh, so if one thread runs this and then another thread tries to run it the second thread will have to wait to acquire that lock until the first thread releases it by exiting this method and that's what we want that's fine and it's the same for this method we want another thread to have to wait to run this method if a thread's already running it and that's all good but the problem here is that there's only one intrinsic lock for the worker object um, so if one thread's running this method, another thread will have to wait to run this method because if one thread's running this method, it's acquired the intrinsic lock of the worker object. And this, uh, another thread, another, a different thread, can't then run this method because it also has to acquire the same lock to run this method. And yet these methods are, are independent. They, um, they don't write to the same data that's a crucial thing. This thread writes to list one and this thread writes to list two. So really what we want is a system whereby um, no two threads can run this method at the same time and no two threads can run this method at the same time but one thread can uh, run this method while another thread is running this method, this method here, um, because um, they're not writing to the same data. So we can do that by creating um, separate locks um, and synchronizing on two locks separately. And we're going to look at the re-entrant lock class later on in this series of tutorials. But here I'm going to show you um, a simple way of doing it just by using um, the object class to lock on. So I'm going to create an object here called lock1, which I'll set equal to a new um, object and I'll create a, another object called lock2 and um, I'm going to say um, down here instead of having synchronized methods I'm going to have synchronized code blocks so I'll say in here synchronized and I'll synchronize on lock1 and I'll put all this code um, in this code block or the sleep doesn't really need to be Synchronized, but let's imagine that that's um, you know doing stuff that we do want to be synchronized. So I'll put it in there, and um, it's going to be the same again here. So I'm going to have this synchronized, but on lock two, and I'm going to put this code in the synchronized code block. Now, um, and we'll delete the synchronized from the method header there. Now, uh, synchronized code blocks work this works similarly, really, to um, synchronized methods except that now two methods can run this method at the same time but if if um, two sorry what did I say <laughs> two threads can run this method at the same time but if one thread's already entered this synchronized code block and um, the second thread will have to wait 
until it can run the synchronized code block. You'll have to wait until the first thread has released this lock by exiting this code block. Um, but since we're locking on different objects, uh, one thread can run the stuff in here while another thread is running the, the stuff in here. Um, because to run this stuff, you have to acquire the intrinsic lock of the lock one object. And to run this stuff, stuff you have to acquire the intrinsic lock of the lock two object. So we've achieved our purpose here. Um, one thread can run this while another thread's running this. But no two threads can run this at the same time, and no two threads can run this at the same time. And now if I run this, we'll see that now we're back down to taking roughly two seconds, because our processing, which takes approximately two seconds, um, now it, um, we can run two lots of processing simultaneously without having issues about waiting on one lock. And by the way, you might wonder why I didn't lock on the lists themselves. And uh, I think that would work, but um, it's good practice to declare separate lock objects because otherwise you can um, you can give yourself a headache. Uh, for example, if, I, if these were numbers that I was incrementing and I tried to lock on the actual numbers themselves, um, you'd never quite know if Java had optimized your variables to point at the same number beside uh, behind the scenes if, if the value of the number was the same. So the bottom line is um, you can complicate things if you try to lock on the actual object that you want to um, that you want to write to and it makes uh, it's better practice to declare separate lock objects here to avoid any possible confusions. So that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll go on to look at thread pools in Java. And uh, if you go to www.caveofprogramming.com slash courses, you can find there more free um, Java courses as well as some paid courses. And uh, all my courses um, include some, at least some free videos. And you can find courses on web programming with servlets and JSPs and um, Java Swing and Beginners Java and uh, Java Collections, and starting in uh, about November 2012, hopefully also some Android, um, an Android tutorial series. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, join me again next time, and until next time, happy coding.